let's talk about uppercuts. Now, uppercuts are any strike coming from the bottom to the top and hitting the chin. And they are acting in the exact same manner as a rotational concussion where we're hitting somebody's chin to the side and causing it to smash the brain in the opposite direction into the skull. When I hit somebody's chin, I'm looking to whip the head up and back. So now the brain is sloshing right into the windshield of the forehead and that's causing the overload. Conventionally, when we think of an uppercut, we think of a boxing uppercut, which is a fist. The body is loaded and coming in tight, and I'm driving it straight up. Right there. Snap the head. Now, a lot of people have been successful with uppercuts. I had a good buddy of mine who used to use uppercuts with fists all the time in the street. Um, what I will tell you is this. A bare knuckle uppercut, if you're gonna stay fisted, needs to be short and tight. I don't wanna use one of these Street Fighter video game uppercuts. I uppercut. That's where I'm going clean through. It's way more power than I need. Some styles, like uh, Japanese shooto, shoot wrestling, will use more of a pushing uppercut, like an old Irish style, sort of long push like that. And that's really because they're looking to set up and open up for the legs. Um, but the Irish would use that in bare knuckle boxing because it would put less risk into, uh, into the strike and protect the hands a bit. Instead of something a little bit uh, speedy and uncontrollable that's hitting on an arc that's only temporarily touching, they would look for a long push with the hand and aim more for the throat just to cause the, the wholeness of the spine to lock and to create distance and shake the brain. It was more of a destabilizer to set you up for bigger hits with the other hand. Um, if I'm looking for a knockout uppercut, I don't like to use the fist. And the reason for that is when the hand is coming up, there's a very high risk of the, the chin and the jaw coming down, or the teeth for that matter, into the mid phalange line between the hardest portions of the knuckle. And I've seen a lot of people uh, break their phalanges. I didn't break mine, but I have a lot of teeth marks in my hands um, from ex exactly that, from coming in on a little bit of an angle or upward, and yet you catch the upper row of teeth. Terribly destructive for their face, uh, but not the greatest way to uh, spend a night exchanging fluids with somebody that you're in a fight with. So I far prefer, if I'm close enough, to look for an upward elbow. Again, with an upward elbow, I don't want to have some big arcing strike, so I'm not looking to do like a movie elbow that comes up like that. Rather, I'm looking to kind of stop it at about the height of his nose. So I'm coming up as if I'm aiming for the throat, but driving up on an angle into the sort of brainstem area. This is going to cause all the, the sort of loss of stability that you would have with a normal uppercut, and it's far more durable than your fist. If I'm using palm, there are two basic ways you can do it. You can do this kind of, you know, glancing upward shot. I'm not a fan of it. I always want to draw it. So I'm either doing that straightforward shot like I would with my brachial stun, or I'm driving into the face just to, to mash it and to cause some damage. And the great thing about it is the only way you're going to miss it is if the person puts their chin down, in which case you're still catching them square in the face and pushing the brain through the spine. You may not get a knockout, but you're going to totally rock their world, take their stability off, and then set yourself up for other shots. So that's the most reliable. If you look at things like uh, World War II combatives, they were huge on this idea of driving up and getting the fingers in the eyes and then driving down. I think it's a fine technique. Um, in my experience, I used a lot of palm strikes. Uh, later in my career and what usually happened is either I was slamming and slapping with the hits or else I was clamping and gouging. It's very hard to overlap those two. I don't remember ever having an experience where I hit and then gouged on the same motion because the hit is going to create a response. The head is going to fly away like a baseball bat hitting a baseball uh, or it's going to create a flinch and the head's going to go down and then after your hit you kind of have a messy molly and you grab and you go from there. So I'm always of the opinion to keep it simple. Decide what you're going to do. Either you're going to slam into them or you're going to clamp onto them and you're going to hit one thing at a time, one butt at a time, you eat the meal. So when, you, uh, when you're going in for those shots, don't try to do four things at once. Just keep the hand open, drive into the face, whether both hands are going together in a universal kind of spearing action, whether it's staggered, one's going long and one's staying back, like in boxing. Um, it's your call, or if you're close enough, if you're looking at that elbow, but again, the elbow is not coming up in a Hollywood arc, it's driving in the same line that the palm would be along that diagonal to the brainstem to give you that angle, to give you that density.